So now it's time to cut your dowel rod to length. And all I've done is placed it at one end, set it back very slightly, okay? Maybe quarter of a millimeter, half a millimeter, something like that. And then mark the other side again, quarter or half a millimeter back, just on the inside. And in case you haven't done so, now would be a good time to add a little edge paint to the inside, because if there is a gap and you've only added edge paint to the outside, you will see a little bit of that lighter colored raw leather that's showing through there. So now you've cut it to length, making sure it's a nice 90 degree cut, not at an angle. If you're new to cutting wood, just take a couple of practice cuts first and then when you're confident, take it right back. Alternatively, you can use a mitre box, which will give you a perfect 90 degree cut with a regular saw. Now, I like to finish these with just a natural finish really. This is just some simple French polish, alcohol-based French polish, which is just shellac resin. It dries very, very quick and uh, gives a nice seal to the ends and along the wood as well. But you can use a multitude of finishes, boiled linseed oil would be good, china wood oil, or any of the other finishes, as long as it's not a very thick varnish. You don't really want that, you'll have a tough time pushing it through. So. If your tolerances are nice and tight, this bit should be a little bit of a challenge. So one thing I like to do is just take a piece of uh, scrap leather, lay it down just to protect it. And I'm gonna take a block of wood here, just some hardwood I had laying around, and place that up near that stitch line. The idea of doing this is just so that I, when I press down, I'm applying even pressure all the way along. I'm gonna take my dowel, and to make it easier, before I applied my any finishes, I just took a bit of sandpaper, 45 degrees, and just gone over that sharp edge there. So I'm gonna feed this in. You can wiggle it first of all, just to get it going. Okay, when it just begins to protrude through, maybe a bit too much there. Just begins to protrude through. I'm gonna take my strap and I'm not gonna go on the rear side, we want the front side here facing up because the bag is currently facing up. This is the outside of the bag. Squeeze that in there if I can, and then just wiggle it on. Pushing through to the other side, and then just kind of working it through. You might be, if you, your tolerances are very tight, you could be here for a while. If you're really struggling, just take some really fine sandpaper, go along its length, of the dowel, very, very lightly. Try not to take off any of the polish that you put on, just to create a layer of dust and it acts as a lubricant to push it through. Try not to use wax. In some circumstances, it, it works quite well as a, a lubricant, but it will get very sticky going through, so it'll actually make it worse. So I'm just gonna work in it. Once I've gone through there, and get through just till it protrudes there. Might be a bit much. <laughs> okay. Make sure you've got the right way facing up and your loop is the right direction. It's not folded around or twisted the wrong way. It's how the bag will not naturally hang. It's gone through there quite nicely. Pressing down in the area where, the, where it is, ideally that's where you want to press down on the wood. It's going through to the other side. That's got it. Good. And now, just take a second to make sure the ends are even. And there's a few creases there because it's compressed the leather. Same here, and this is stitched on nice and tight, so it kind of goes wherever you leave it, which is ideal. And that's good. So we're starting to see how the bag is gonna hang now, which is good. Okay, so now we wanna retain these in here, okay? Because over the years it could sort of start working its way out. We wanna make sure the dowel stays exactly where we want it to be. So just off the edge of the cutting table here, I've placed the uh, dowel reinforced end just on the work table. 
And I'm going to take a round all and a small ruler and just kind of mark about a centimeter inside of every end piece here, okay? So just inside of here, in the center, and you can have it wherever you want. You could have it right at the bottom so it's obscured and can't be seen. I don't mind this being seen. So I'm just gonna make a small hole there. And once I've aligned everything up, I can make another one here. And then on the other side. And at this point, you're making sure that you've moved your leather forward and backwards and everything's equalized out and there's no gaps. That's what we're looking to avoid. Obviously, we're not gonna put one here because this needs to rotate. This needs just moving up a little bit here. Making sure nothing back here has changed. It hasn't. That's flush on the end. Right, now, you have a choice of various different things that you can use to pin this. So you can choose, ideally I'd, I'd go with stainless steel or brass. This is uh, brass pins by Challenge, okay? They're very small and they don't show up too much, so if you weren't looking for them, you might miss them on the bag. Or you can make a little bit more of a feature. So these are, I think, R6 upholstery nails, so they're steel along the nail part and at the top is actually solid brass. It's not brassed, it's solid brass. Brassed means plated and that will wear off and rust. That's not something you want to do. So you want to use pure brass or pure stainless steel. I like these, they look quite nice. Now ideally, if you're using hardwood like I am here and you're using small brass nails, they can be a little bit of a challenge to nail in and what can end up happening is they start bending because the wood is too hard. You're not really in that much danger of splitting the wood. I've actually tried splitting the wood uh, by going between the grain here with multiple small nails in line and uh, it didn't split, so that's not something I'm too worried about. But I still like to pilot a small hole about half the depth of the nail part. And that way I can push it in and the piloted hole actually supports it as I hammer it in all the way. But it's not gonna come under a lot of stress. It's just stopping very minor lateral movement so that this wooden piece, this wooden dowel, doesn't start moving out over time as it's used. Now you can use a small pin vise. These are very inexpensive. They can be purchased on eBay, Amazon, various other places. And you simply go to one of the holes that you created with your round all, and you manually start twisting and eventually that will go through, okay? It's gonna take some time. But if you do have a small little hand drill, then it's gonna make life so much easier. And tapping these in, I mean, you can use something like uh, a saddler's hammer like this, but it will tend to kind of bruise the top of the nail. You get a bit of a flat spot, really. So I like to use, this is what I use for small pins, just a small nylon hammer. Make sure it's supported underneath. You can see it goes all, almost all the way in. It's only the last few millimeters that's actually got some bite to it. As soon as that sinks into the leather, I can see the leather deform very slightly. That's all we need. Okay, so now it's time to add our gussets to the bag and bring this all together, turning a 2D object into a 3D object. Now, just a little bit of prep. At the top here where we have this uh, interior leather lining, I'm just gonna trim these, just level with the sides there. And on the inside, because we're not exactly sure how far up we're coming, we will find out in due course, 
just on the inside of the stitches there. I'm just gonna add a little bit of roughening. Discover how to make a beautiful leather bag in less time than most wallets. This easy to follow step-by-step -step video course will guide you through the process of creating a tote bag for yourself or a loved one, even if you have zero bag making experience. Imagine the satisfaction of carrying a one-of-a-kind tote created entirely by your hands. This course is going to reveal new information, such as how to create a hidden bag base, no need to skive panels, or stitching long base seams. One simple trick for custom measured gussets, no more confusion, just perfect gussets every time. And how to make rotating shoulder straps for handheld or over the shoulder versatility. Don't miss this chance to become a bag maker today. For more information, leave a comment below or send me a message. Hi, my name is Philip, and this is the Leathercraft Masterclass.